I'm here with Debbie from Amaday. Um, I'd first like to ask you, what do you think of the black market? What do you think of the event here today? I think the black market is a wonderful event. I'm very grateful for it being in existence, um, mainly because I think it, it, it gives the community a better sense of what's around in the black community in, in terms of businesses and entrepreneurs, creative individuals and designers. And it's inspiring for our young children to be looking up to these kinds of things in our economy as well, in our business, in our community. So in terms of your business, um, Amaday, um, what does that name mean? Um, actually, it's my maiden name, but I did research and I found out that it means God's love as well. So that, that's a phenomenal thing. Um, wow. Yeah. That's, you know, and, and in terms of it being for children or babies, it's an ex expression of, exactly. of God's love. So, and so what inspired you? What was the, the catalyst for you starting the business? Okay, I'm, I'm a mum myself. I have three children and I wore all of them. I experiment with different types of slings and this particular style of carrying mm -hmm. was one that fitted our family and worked for us. Yeah. And I thought, why not make it available for other people? When I was looking initially at slings like these, I couldn't necessarily find anything that felt right to me, what I wanted. and. You know, I felt comfortable wearing, so I started doing a bit more research, and I liked African print. I thought, why not use the Ankara or African fabrics for the slings? So you wanted something with a with a cultural yeah. aspect to it, and to kind of pay homage to my ancestors. And I grew up in London, watching African mums carrying their babies in African fabric yeah, too. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do that, but didn't know how to. And doing my own research, I I kind of came across this this way of doing it. So how long have you been, been going? Um, it's been on and off since 2010, in between having my own babies and I home educate my children too, so I'm very busy. But in the last year or so, it's been picking up a bit more, been able to have more time to get to more. So which is your, I mean, I've been having a look at a lot of the products you've got on here, beautiful, beautifully made, lovely prints. Um, what would you say was kind of your standout product or the thing that was doing that you like best? It's the baby wearing because I'm actually a baby wearing consultant and I actually teach people how to use slings and what type of slings are suitable for them and their baby. So the, the slings was the main driving force for the business. But I think people should know more about baby wearing. It's benefits for both the parents and the child because there's so many benefits to them. Um, for example, with baby spines when they're first born, their spines are very curved. And with things like being put in, we, we're in a culture where we put babies in pushchairs and cots and yes, car seats yes. a lot, and they're very flat backed and it affects the baby's spines. Whereas there's something like this is it's more natural. Yeah, it's more natural. Yeah. And you can adjust it to the baby as they grow as well. Wonderful. So finally, um, I just want to know your thoughts on black business in general us supporting each other and as a community um, buying and selling from one, one another so what are your thoughts on that and, and your opinions around that? Um, in my thoughts I think it's something that should happen more um, I think it's what well, in, in, in the UK from what I've noticed is that it, the money doesn't kind of stay in our community as much as perhaps other cultures and other... It circulates about once. <laughs> well yeah there you go and um, I definitely think it's like events like this make these things happen, make people aware of what's out there. So I think it's important for us to be supporting each other so that these businesses can keep on keep on going. I was a visionary. I am a visionary here in the ancestral world. And I am prepared to lead the whole black race to a race of peace and harmony, allowing us to be self-sufficient. I am not happy. My spirit is not happy with the occurrence in my country today. I can see my the mindsets are changing. Changing to the materialistic. Changing and allowing different people in. Coming in with their different mindsets. To change the vibration of our people. I am not happy. Not happy at all. Tell the people who you are. Um, I'm Maskila. And I'm um, an uh, actor, writer, performer. It's a privilege to be here to witness your performance, honestly. And alongside you, we have Nefertiti. And what was your role, Nefertiti, in this? Um, my role was really um, to produce the material and connect with the ancestral world to bring the uh, material forward. 
We were given this knowledge from the ancestors. For the people to use as a guidance for living. The words and symbols have meaning, but they have been cast aside. And alongside you we have... Menelik, Shabazz. Um, my role was to shape the information mm. that had come through and to work alongside uh, Maskila to create an end product. That they are wearing the cross and different things, following a book that is not theirs. We have a whole system of living in peace and harmony, as we have always done, from time gone by. How did you prepare yourself for this role? Um, just rehearsals. Um, I'm used to performing, so it's not really... It's, I think it's easier to perform by yourself than it is with other people, because they distract you. And Nefertiti, what would you say about this? Because you had the vision. Was it you that had the vision? Um, well, really, I came with the information. And then thought, well, how are we going to get this across to the public? Because obviously, Ya Asanta had a lot to say and a lot of positive vibration to give to the community. Um, I spoke to Menelik about it, and then we came up with, with the plan to go forward. None of us look back, we go forward. And when I say us, I talk about all my people, all my people, all through the diaspora and the mainland. They have lost their connection with Part of what we're trying to do is to bring her story to light, introduce her story to different generations, mm. to also um, bring the knowledge of the ancestral world into um, the knowledge of the people, to know that it's still alive, and really to um, create a way to do that. And knowing that with all works that are kind of um, new, innovative you always start with small acorns and then you develop what do you think will come from this in terms of our community recognizing that they can overcome they can withstand the struggles that we're facing now what would you say with something so controversial the best way to give it to the people is through the arts because that's the best way for them to take it in because it's not it's not as aggressive they can kind of sit back relax and take it in and I think that um, as long as we reach it, most of the people, they'll at least take the message from it. Whether or not they deal with it right then, but they'll take the message and deal with it at a later date or in future. Um, I agree with Maskela. Um, I believe that the arts is more powerful because people are not aware. You know, they're sitting down, you might not be aware of what has been said, but it's the vibration, it's hitting you. And the way how the acting was done was really professionally. So people were getting, you know, the vibration of Ya Asantawa, and that's a lesson in itself. There are many spirits who have negative words and negative vibrations, and they will only bring your land down, down to extinction. Tell us about your, your, yourself and your products. Well, myself, my name's Matthew, Matthew Barrett, and my company is Breakout Wear, um, hence here, Breakout Wear. And Breakout Wear is about free speech, is about rebelling <laughs> and it's about the use of a t-shirt so that's what it's about when I say rebel it's it's really about um, saying something that that goes counter to um, that goes counter to the mainstream really and I think there's certain messages that are not coming through on the mainstream uh, we've got fashion which just um, reinforces um, commercialization and reinforces um, uh, a, a real narrow way of thinking. You've got some nice t-shirts out here. I mean, where do the designs come from? Is it you? Do you get other people to design them? How does it work? It's a combination. So there'll be things that I, I, I see or certain phrases that I heard of for instance, let's have a look. Um, just behind you, there's one tell lie vision. Now we all know tell lie vision because that's one that we've grown up with, and it was just a matter of saying that that has to be on a T-shirt. Now I'm in the position to do it myself, so that's that's what I did. And the the message within there, uh, a lot of people are already aware of. And then there's people who come across that term for the first time. They, it just makes them think, hmm, tell my vision. Or another alternative is to that is the 
is the all lies all lies which again says does what it says on the label um like it, this one here yeah this one here don't steal the government ha hates competition i mean where did that idea come from this one here don't steal the government hates competition so where did that come from i first came across this term from um uh, a guy called Ron Paul in, in the States and he's someone who is about small government <laughs> and I think we need much smaller government here in the UK because the more bigger government we have the more bigger government we get <laughs> and the more bigger government we get the more they're in our pockets they've got their hands in our pockets every time in truth, I mean, all of the all of the slogans that I can see are quite political. Yeah. How does that affect the customer? People get the message. People Good. understand it. They see it. There's there's a lot what they can relate to, and I think it's tapping into a certain um, a certain consciousness, really. Okay. Consciousness. What's the price range of these t-shirts? Um, they are on a special offer today, but on, on my website they start from um, 13.99 at breakoutwear.co.uk. This is Shanika Williams. Shanika, how old are you? 13 years old. You're 13? And we've got in front of us here some of your artwork and it's very colourful, very beautiful. What inspires you? Um, basically, basically, I just um, get other of artists' work and when I look at them it really inspires me and stuff like that. Yeah. Have you got a favourite artist Shanika? Uh, not really, I like a, a variety of those of artists. Okay, so in terms of what you want to do in the future, do you think it's going to be art? Yeah, I would like to be an architect when I grow up as well. An architect? Yeah. Okay, and um, your paintings they seem very historical have you got a particular interest in history at all yeah um, I'm really interested in, in culture paintings so I basically themed all my paintings as in with my culture with your culture and your culture is um, Jamaica I, I'm from Jamaica okay good tell me something how do you market your how do we get hold of your stuff well my sister, um, the organiser of Black Market is my sister Charmaine and she um, I basically goes to all of her events and market all my paintings there. And do people buy things from you? Is it very successful? Yeah, really good, yeah. Everyone likes them. Do children like your things? Yeah, yeah they always come to my store and say, ooh, I like this painting. So do you manage to get the parents to buy them anything, Shanika? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me something, are you rich? Mm -hmm. Not really at the moment. Well, I think you're rich. <laughs> and I think you're going to be very successful. Okay, yeah. Thank you.